Alright, hello, funny, and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spot Night series, where today we are having a look at the DP27 Deck to Terry Off Machine Gun mod, which, oh boy, I probably just horribly butchered the name of this thing, and it's being made by user POV Combat, and they are looking to add into the Commonwealth the Soviet made DP27 Light Machine Gun, and I've been having a whole load of fun with this gun so far, as well, you you guys know me, I always do love a good real-world weapon, so long as it's Cold War, or preferably before. And yeah, this is made in the early Soviet era and was a gun known for its reliability and simplicity, good for a post-apocalypse, and is actually still used by some countries to this day. So let's uh, jump on over here and have a look at what exactly we are getting with the DP-27, which in its most basic and standard form will do 13 damage using a 5.56 round with a firing rate of 100, range of 119, accuracy of 54 for a decently hefty weight of 12.5. Not too bad there, and as you can see, this is a pretty good looking gun. I really do like the modeling and texturing on this thing. It is pretty darn good, a lot of nice details around the place and certainly looks like all the images I've ever seen of this gun on the web. So, a very, very well made indeed. Now, as for modifications on this thing, it does have a decent list of uh, things, so you can at least up the damage, change a few other stats, but it's not the largest list ever, and you're never going to really be able to do too much with this gun. It really is just things like upping the damage and uh, accuracy, etc. Would like to see especially some more sights in there, but oh well, for now it's still a perfectly functional light machine gun for you to use in the game, and is fun because, well, it has that fun top drum there rather than the more traditionally used magazines we see today, which is just intriguing. Now, as for how you get your hands on this weapon, first you are going to need a prerequisite of the American 180 mod, as this does reuse that whole sort of top drum animation, etc. Uh, for this particular weapon, so you will need that, and once you've got all that installed, you just simply need to go over to any chemistry station in the world and head on down to the DP27 category where you can build one of these for just a bit of aluminum, gears, screws, spring, and steel. Not too bad, so honestly you should be able to build this pretty darn early on in the game and have yourself a fun little machine gun, which for some reason shows up in here as zero fire rate. I don't know why. You build it and then it's fine. It goes to its proper fire rate, but oh well, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Strange little things in the game. Now let's take a look at what uh, modifications we do have in the weapon workbench here, starting in the receiver category, which is probably one of our two most comprehensive categories here, where you've got either the standard aluminum parts kit heightened durability improved machining or factory condition and that one's going to give you the highest uh, damage here at 19 as well as a good little boost to your range and accuracy which is always great. Now, then the barrel category, I'd say your second most numerous parts uh, modification category, where we've got the standard short, long, and also an alternative barrel that's going to have uh, close to the same stats as the standard, though it does for some reason lose one singular point in accuracy, but does look pretty darn cool. And that long barrel is going to give you a nice boost, and of course the short, lowering your accuracy. We then have the magazine category, where we've got two different options, the standard 47 or a 105 round magazine which of course this one does carry a lot more bullets but I'll talk a little bit more about it later I prefer this one I think it's more interesting again we'll talk about that in a moment now then in the sights category I'm sad to say there's only one with iron sights like I said before I wish there were more options in here but at least this is usable. It's not too bad of an iron sight, so per perfectly usable for you in the game. 
Now, then the muzzle category, again, we've got just one option of standard. And in the stock is another one of the actual numerous categories here, where we've got either a, either a standard, pouch, metal, hollow, or alternative one. Actually, I actually think my, the pouch one's my favorite on this one, because who doesn't love a lovely little pouch back there? And yeah, that is it for the different mods. Again, I do wish we'd see a little bit more on both the usability side and stat side, but also some aesthetic options would be pretty cool. But overall, it's perfectly serviceable to help you up the damage and some other stats to make it a more usable gun later on into the game. Which, you know, not too shabby. So let's take a look at this thing in practice. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab the one and only one that I've modified, considering the limited number of mods. There's, you know, wasn't really enough to make two different ones. Well, let's start with the standard gun and take some shots. And there you go, a wonderful weapon. Very, very easy to keep this thing on target. It is very controllable with only a tiny, tiny little amount of kick, so you can easily stay on target on your enemies and just riddle them full of holes. Always good to have it there. Now, as for the animation, I do really love it. It's got a great movement of the actual drum up top. I always do like that when we have seen these sorts of uh, top drum ammo magazine mods in the past. Some of them don't move, so I do quite enjoy when they do. One little problem that's just a minor little thing here is you'll notice that if I take a couple of shots and then reload, that um, weird little hinge or whatever immediately kind of clicks back to its starting position whereas if we empty the whole magazine that little clip goes to the other side and then it spins and goes from there so just a little oddity if you do uh reload the magazine before you empty it out entirely but not really a problem now why i prefer the standard uh, drum magazine up top though is if we go take a look at my modified version it has the 105 round one and you'll notice it's smooth. <laughs> it's a really weird reason to prefer a lower ammunition magazine, <laughs> but I kind of like all the stuff that's on the top, because even though you still can tell that this one is moving, because you got some of the, like, lettering on there, and you eventually you got, like, that little nub that goes across, uh, it's still, it's still a little bit harder to tell that it's moving. A drum on the top that's rotating around. You still can, but I like just all the weird little bits and bobs on the other drum. Like I said, weird reason to prefer the lower capacity, but uh, still, still, I do. I know, I'm strange. Now let's take a look at this thing in use. We'll stick with this one since it is the one that I did upgrade to get that 19 damage. And of course, if you did have the correct perks for automatic fire and all that, you will be able to up this a bit more. But with 19 and 105 rounds per drum, we should hopefully be able to take out a death claw. Granted, with my firing, <laughs> Who knows? But let's get up to our cheese spot and uh, die, Deathclaw. Oh boy, it's going to take a while. We're certainly doing damage, but not a lot. By the time we get out of just one magazine, or well, drum rather, there we go. We got him half down. You know, for me and my crappy shooting, not bad. Not bad. Okay, okay. You know, I think also appropriate song that it changed to for... This right now. God, I love the classical radio station in this game. All right, and let's see, let's see. Nope, we're not going to kill him with the second uh, drum. It'll take into the third for us to annihilate this Deathclaw. Again, if, you know, I was a better shot, we might have been able to do it in the two. Especially, again, if I would have taken some additional perks. But let's hold our ground this time and take him down. Oh, God, take him down with our third drum. Yes, die, Deathclaw. Die. Now, on the plus, with that ease of controllability, it was easy for me to keep on target when I actually could, because, again, I suck at shooting, but overall, a fun weapon. It's great having a, another light machine gun in, in this game, and one that's, you know, not as bulky as the in-game assault rifle, so that's always good to see, and as always, I love seeing these older historic guns. They are just a lot of fun to have in the Fallout universe. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend that you go and do, you have a look at the link in the description of the video, as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this one.
everyone today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching as always. Have a good one.